off a day, family, friends, and fans. So today I got my sketch box in the mail and I absolutely could not wait to open it. So we are going to do it right now. I'm a bit of a mess, shopping all day, it's my birthday, but I wanna see what's in this box. So we're going to open it now. It's a little lighter and it sounds like there's a lot of little things in here. So I'm a little apprehensive to see what's inside, but the last couple boxes have been awesome. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that this one is too. So let's take a look. Okay, now another thing that concerns me is the piece of tape that I have right here does not seem like the usual packing tape. And it's been it's kind of loose, so I'm hoping nothing is missing. Typical. So far I haven't lost anything yet, but it's always the first time for everything, right? I don't have a whole lot of faith in the Guam mail system. All right, so let's go inside. All right, let's make sure. Let's pull out our little cards so we can see what's inside. Looks like we got some more Copics in there, and I can't even get the car. I'm going to have to go pull the stuff out. Let's see what we got first. And then we'll... All right, so we got a Prismacolor marker, the Sand Sable. I actually have a huge set of these markers, and I like them. Um, they're not bad. They're not great because they're not life fast, and they they fade pretty quick, but they're still fun to work with. And then I got a touch liner. We got a shin art, shin and art. I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly. A brush marker. So we're doing markers this time. This is a Derwent drawing Chinese white. Oh, that is awesome. I just got the Derwent drawing set and um, my white's already halfway. So this is good. Same me having to buy another one. And then we've got the Copic. The, uh, the Sketchbox has definitely set me up well when it comes to Copics. I probably have close to a whole set of Copic markers thanks to the Sketchbox. Now I do get the, the, the more expensive box so I can get the professional um, quality supplies. And it has paid off. So we got another of the Shin and Art Touch markers and then we got two Copics. So that is the contents of this box. Let's make sure we've got everything in here. stuck in here. Okay, so for May's box, let's see, we have the two Shannon Art markers. Got those. And then we have the original Copic marker mint green, which is this one. I'm assuming it's this one. Not that they gave me mint green. Well, maybe that is mint green. And green. Okay, read right the top. And then the Copic Sketch Marker. So this colors may vary, so I got that one. Then we got the Prismacolor. And the Durant Tron. Bleh. Sorry, I cannot talk. The color pencil. And then we got the fine liner. So, yes, everything is in this box. So, not. I guess, considering the quality of the materials that I got, this is a really good box. I was hoping for. I was hoping for like a surface to, to, to do the work on, but I've got plenty of services. So once again, very nice box. And um, I'm excited to see what we can come up with. This is actually a really creepy drawing. And this is done by Anna K. Bajordal. Oh, there we go. Put that into the camera where you can see it. But there's the drawing for this one. So this should be a lot of fun. All right, stay tuned. Let's see what we can come up with. Here we go. So I've taped down my marker paper and I pulled out this really awesome sketch pencil and I started sketching on my eye. Now I actually had this box almost a month before I figured out what I was going to do with it. I just could not think of anything and so I picked an eye. And as you can see I have managed to capture my legs. You're welcome. Um, anyways back to the drawing. So I'm sketching out the eye. I just found a picture that I liked on Pixabay and started sketching out the basic shape of the eye. I knew I wasn't going to get it exact because the color palette was limited. So I'm sketching out the eye and making sure I have at least everything as accurate as I can get it. And as you can see I wanted to make it bigger so I erased it and started again. But even though I used to get discouraged when I'd have to erase something and start again, I've found I've I've tried to remotivate myself when this happens and say, well, I'm going to be even better next time, even better next time. The more I have to sketch this out, the more familiar I'm going to I'm going to get with it. So the next time will be even better. 
So I don't look at erasing something because of a mistake as negatively as I used to. It actually benefits me in the long run. So maybe that's why I'm so good with eyes. I've had to redo eyes several times. Anyway, so I guess the story behind the whole eye thing is growing up, nobody could pronounce my name correctly. And no matter how many times I would say it's I-Della, they would call me E-Della or A-Della. And so when I was in my school, one of our projects was to come up with a logo or a signature for our artwork. And so I was coming up with all kinds of different ideas and none of them just, none of them felt right. And so just messing around, I, I remember, you know, how frustrating it was for me that nobody could pronounce my name correctly. So I decided, well, let's see if we can help with that. And I love tigers. And so I was trying to go with something like a tiger eye-ish and it just turned out the way that it did. So my signature is an I, Della. So now when people see that, there's no mistaking on how to pronounce my name. Anyway, so here I am adding the colors. Now because I only had green and blue um, for the eye, I did the best that I could. So I went over with some of the, the darker areas in the eyeball with the brown, then I covered it with the green and the blue, and I had to do several layers in order to get the tones just right. And even then, the eyeball still looked flat. I added a lot of the Chinese white to it to help make, give it more of a three-dimensional look. Just wasn't quite doing it. What I really needed was um, like a lighter shade marker or a, more of a contrast between the two, or maybe even something to help them blend better. But I had to work with what I had. So uh, not too bad with how it turned out. I'm not disappointed. I do feel I could have done better with um, more tools though. Okay, so after I got finished adding my under colors, the darkers, the, the dark browns and the light browns and everything, all the details in the eye, then I went over with the white pencil and tried to emphasize the white areas of the eye so I could keep them as white as possible. And then I started adding the blue color for the eyeball itself. And by doing it this way, I found that um, the blue kind of blended a little bit with the stuff underneath, so it made it look more like like a hole instead of a whole bunch of different little pieces in the eye. And then I went over again with the darker colors to try to emphasize some of those lines, not all of them, and to give it more of a blended feel and yet more definition as well. So I have found that eyes are so fascinating. You never really think about it until you have to draw one or paint one. And there's so much to an eye. I think that's why I enjoy them so much. You can bring so much life into artwork just by doing an eyeball. And that, it, it's just, I find it very fascinating. I wish I had more colors to work with. That would have made this a whole lot more fun. And I could have, you know, really gone all out and made more of a more realistic eye. But with the tools that I had, I did the best that I could. And I really like how it turned out. I wasn't going for realistic. I was just going to, you know, definitely make something look like a now, one thing I noticed while working with these three different brands, the Prismacolor, the Sheen and Art Touch, and the Copics, is they all work very well together. And I've already had experience with Prismas, and I like them, but they, their blending uh, was not as great as I was hoping. The Copics blend beautifully, and the Sheen and Art Touch remind me a lot of the Copics, but they all play really well together. So that was, that was nice. That was a, a nice little bonus there. I hardly noticed which one I was using based on the blending. So that helped. Now, as with the now here I am. I I have a piece of palette paper to the side of me, and I'm using that to um, scribble the marker on, and uh, and then I would take uh, another marker and blend it into that, so I could get more of variation in color and blending. And I did that with the black pen as well. I would scribble that on there, and then I'd use um, one of the markers and pick up some of the the black, and that gave it kind of a gray shade. I was able to fade into it, so the shadows were not super extreme. And I also found that if I work really fast, I could lay down the black and then go immediately over with a different marker, and that would also give it a gray shade as well. So there was various ways that I could blend things and make it smoother, which is a nice nice little tip for when I finally pull out my Winsor & Newton pigment markers and use them. Again, when I find time. Anyway, so this is where I'm getting ready. I'm trying to find out where the, the eyelash line is. 
and I'm emphasizing with the black marker and the blue marker going over the gray, going over the black with the blue to so give it a kind of a shade, a blending. Wow, I cannot talk today. And then I add the white in there to add some highlights, give it some more of a three-dimensional look. And here I decided it was the best time to turn on my overhead light. So that's why the lighting changed. I apologize for that. So here I am going over and <clears throat> filling in the whites of the eyes. Excuse me. <coughs> I just couldn't get it to light, lighten up enough to feel comfortable coloring the whole eye. So I just left the majority of that white areas white. Which is fine. Even though it looks funky right now, I knew that if I put my lashes in it, it was going to turn out a lot better. Which is cute. For some reason, my voice is trying to leave me. Now this is where I use the blending with the black marker technique quite a bit so I could add the shadows underneath the eyelid. Um, I just scribbled the black on the palette paper and picked it up with the, I believe it was the blue marker I used, and then I was able to add the darker shades underneath the upper lid. Now I'm going over and blending in the, the black more on the lower lid with one of the, I think it was the touch marker. And then adding the white, trying to blend out the the eye white part of the eye a little bit more, so it'll blend better without that high, you know, transition. It almost worked. So just want to make sure everything looks the best that I can before I add the eyelashes. I knew that was going to pretty much finalize everything. So here we go. And of course, the eyelashes are the funnest part anyway. Now, if you notice. The eyelash does not go straight up and down. I actually loop down over the eyeball itself and then I go up. And I don't they don't go straight up and down. They crisscross and all kinds of things. So that right there will help help add dimension to your eye as well. And the same with the lower lid. Not straight up and down. And they do not go directly onto the eye itself. There's actually a little lip there as well. It's called the tear line. Something I just recently discovered after doing eyes on a regular basis. So here I am finishing up the eye line, and now for the grand finale, sign it with my eyeball signature, untape it, and we are good to go. This is a lot of fun, and I can't wait for the next sketchbox, which will be any day now. Okay, well, hopefully you all enjoyed that. Let's recap on the sketchbox for May of 2018. Now, I've noticed the more that I use Copics, the more that I'm impressed with them. I wasn't really impressed with them before I never really used them and I wasn't much of a marker fan, but I really like how well they blend. Now, I clearly have an obsession with eyes, which is probably why my signature is an eye, but I have a lot of fun. So, and I couldn't think of what to draw with the colors that they gave me, and then it just came to me, well, why not draw an eye? That seems to be my default, so that's what I did. Now, I already have this set of pencils and I love them and it works real pretty good for going over the marker. I just, I guess I wasn't being brave enough and I didn't fill in this area right here. So it looks a little odd. It's not great, but it's not bad considering it's done with marker. And let's see, the other markers, I really like the Copics. They're really nice markers. And the Touch are actually not bad either. They are very smooth and they blend very well as well. And let's see, and I noticed that if I kept, if what I did is if I wanted to get a smoother feel, I would um, color on a piece of uh, palette paper and that way the markers uh, would stay uh, moist enough that I could um, pick it up with another marker and that would blend my colors a little better and that seemed to work well and that's how I was able to get darker tints as well with this marker. I would color that on and use the marker I was going to use to darken and to pick up some of the black. So that's how I got some of the, the darker shadows and stuff in there. I'm sure if I had a bigger set of the markers with a wider range of color, I could have made this eye look a lot better. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. It was a lot of fun to do this. And I was actually thinking last night, hmm, I wonder what I could do with my markers when I knew I had a commission I had to work on. So instead of doing markers, I worked on my commission. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this box as much as I did. I'm looking forward to my June box, which should be coming in the mail in the next couple of days. So stay tuned, and I will let you know when it is in that one. Take care. Bye.